there. Mari is here with the resuscitation coach. On this channel, we do all things resuscitation. So please consider subscribing. In today's video, we'll be reviewing the American Heart Association's ACLS bradycardia algorithm. So let's jump straight in. Here we go. The bradycardia algorithm outlines the steps for the assessment and management of a patient presenting with symptomatic bradycardia with a pulse. If the patient did not have a pulse, the ACLS cardiac arrest algorithm should be followed. See the link above. The algorithm starts with the identification of bradycardia, which in ACLS typically requires intervention at a rate below 50 beats per minute. Once bradycardia has been identified, ensure that the patient's airway is opened, maintained and protected. Check the breathing rate and saturation and if the patient is hypoxemic, provide oxygen or assist breathing as necessary. Check the patient's pulse and blood pressure. Get the monitor on, identify the rhythm and get an IV access. Also, don't forget about a 12-lead ECG if available. Consideration should also be given to possible hypoxic and toxicologic causes. If the patient has adequate perfusion, we only need to observe and monitor the patient. The primary decision point in the algorithm is determining whether the bradycardia is causing the patient signs and symptoms or some other illness is causing the bradycardia. These symptoms may include hypotension, acutely altered mental status, signs of shock, ischemic chest discomfort, acute heart failure. If the patient has poor perfusion, administer atropine 1 mg. Classified as an anticholinergic drug, atropine is effective for the treatment of certain types of bradycardia. Atropine typically will not work for second degree block type 2 or third degree blocks, your high degree blocks. Please also note that the dose of atropine has been updated in the 2020 American Heart Association guidelines from 0.5 mg to 1 mg. If atropine is ineffective, consider either pacing, dopamine or an epinephrine infusion. The American Heart Association gives you the option to select which one you would like to use. In general, it's much quicker to start with pacing and then as you are busy setting up pacing and doing the pacing to start preparing your other medications. Transcutaneous pacing or TCP uses electrodes on the chest to deliver electrical impulses that overrides the normal pacemaker functions of the heart. It's extremely important to know how to set up TCP with the device you have available in your organization. Do not wait for an emergency to arrive in your organization and then try to figure out how to use a device for pacing. Dopamine stimulates the beta-1 adrenoreceptors, resulting in improved myocardial contractility, it increases the SA node rate, and it enhances the impulse conduction in the heart. The dose of dopamine is 5 to 20 mics per kilogram per minute. You can also use epinephrine and the dose is 2 to 10 mics per minute. If the patient does not respond to the atropine, TCP, the dopamine and epinephrine, seek expert consultation and prepare for transvenous pacing. 
we should also search for and treat the contributing causes for bradycardi. Some of these might include myocardial ischemia, drugs or toxins, hypoxia, electrolyte imbalances. If you benefited from this video, please consider subscribing, hit the like button and smash that notification bell. We'll see you in the next video. Have an awesome day.